Graft versus host disease, we sometimes call it GVHD, is a complication of stem cell transplant. You may already have heard about this problem from your doctors and nurses, and you can read more about it in the seven steps booklet that you, you will have received. It occurs because the donor and the recipient are different, and this causes immune cells within the graft to react and cause damage to the patient's body. Early on, this can cause problems like a rash or diarrhea. Later on, it can cause inflammation in different parts of the body. We can treat it, but we know that it's much better to prevent it. And this is why we're running the clinical trial to find better ways of preventing GVHD. MOTD is the name given to this trial, the trial that you've been asked to consider participating in. The reason we're running the trial is that several new approaches have been developed to prevent graft versus host disease. What we don't know, however, is which of these new approaches is best at preventing graft versus host disease. And that's the reason for running the trial. The trial is comparing a standard treatment with two new treatments. So let me tell you about the standard treatment first. The standard approach involves a drug called thymoglobulin. This is an antibody that is given in the few days prior to the infusion of the graft. The new approaches are different. You don't get thymoglobulin. Instead, you get a chemotherapy drug called cyclophosphamide and that's given in the few days after the transplant. There are two ways we're giving the new treatment. Both involve cyclophosphamide, but in one case, we're giving it with a drug called cyclosporin, and another, we're giving it with a drug called cyrolimus. Each of these treatments are used regularly in transplantation worldwide. However, they haven't been compared with each other, and that's the reason for this trial. Patients entering the trial will be randomly allocated by a computer to one of the three treatments. The reason we do this, and, and it's a standard approach across all trials of this kind, is to prevent an issue called bias, in which patients receiving different treatments are different also from each other, and that could lead to the results being unreliable, and that's why we use this process of randomization. You've already um, had a conversation with your doctors and nurses about the transplant process and its risks and its side effects. Many of those side effects and risks that you've discussed overlap with the known side effects of the trial drugs. And that's because many of those trial drugs are used commonly in the transplant process. However, in the context of a clinical trial, we will be monitoring you very carefully for any side effects uh, and assessing whether they have any relationship to the trial drug that you may have received. We've tried to make it as easy as we can for patients so that it would be followed up for the most part in the normal way as they would if they were not in the trial. We will be asking patients to donate a small amount of extra blood for some of the scientific questions we're asking as part of the trial. And we'll also be asking patients to fill out questionnaires at various stages, which ask them how they're getting on and whether they're having any difficulties after the trial. If you have any doubts at all about the trial, you should discuss this with your doctors and nurses before entering the trial. Because some of the trial drugs are given early in the period following transplant, it may be best to stay on those treatments, at least initially. However, if you wish to come out of the trial, we will, we will respect this. We may ask if we can continue to collect information on you, even if you've come out of the trial. Again, that is up to you and we will respect your wishes. At the end of the trial, we'll collect all the data and evaluate the results. We'll present those results 
at clinical meetings and as published papers. We will also provide that information to patients and the public so you will be able to understand what the results were. You should contact your research nurse uh, and your doctor and they'll be able to provide you with more information.